Mate, look, take it from me, that stuff wasn't soft. It was hard as nails. Yeah, but what was Ken Melvin doing with it? Well, look, Alec Peters left his thermos behind, right? And he sent Ken back to get it from the locker room, and he, uh, you know... So Gave it a going over. Well, he had a gander, yeah. Well, it's only natural, innit? Anyone would have done, wouldn't they? What? Dirty magazines the size of Peters. Yeah, but who left them on the front desk? That's what I want to know. Uh -huh. Discipline. Oh, you mean schoolgirls and all that? Well, to be honest with you, they're a more immature student, but, sir, uh, I said they weren't half getting inside. Could I interest you in duty, Hollis? Uh, yes, sir. What a jerk, is it, son? Sir. <clears throat> A discretion. Is that clear? Nothing wrong with being keen on the job, Hollis. Oh, uh, no, son. Don't go berserk. All right, two remand prisoners means we're short on cells. Oh, they often, I suppose. No, Hollis. Barton Street, once we're full up. So winos and domestics can wait, eh? That would please the chief super. Are you going to share this joke, David? No, Sarge. Or is it when you're going to flog to Tony Blackburn? <laughs> All right, that's it. Right, late comers. Stamp five feet. Hollis, four feet. Oh, God. Sorry, first come, first serve with me. Oh. Abel, six feet. Mary will drop you off on the way, all right? Davis, you're at Crown Court, aren't you? Off you go. Of course, it's a lot more work for us, but if they're starting at 12,000 a year, we can demand value for money. I know I shouldn't be surprised by figures like that, but it makes you think, doesn't it? What was it when you started, eh? Eight pound a week? <laughs> six pounds, 17 and six. In those days, they knew you were motivated. There was no way you were doing it for the money at that price. All right. <laughs> well, I should be back about six or quarter past. Only a few more candidates to see. I want you to go and arrest him. He's still there doing it now. How many other people is he going to assault? I'll deal with this. You can go on, Mary. OK. Um, if no seconds will pay my madam. I'm afraid it's only common assault. Common? These tomatoes are not common. And you look at the mark on my coat. What exactly did you say to the storeholder? I simply queried the price of some of his produce, because I know he charges me more than he does other people. 139 receiving. Go ahead, Ken. I've seen him deliberately changing the price tag on some of his fruit when he sees me coming, and others. I'm not the only one. So I pointed out that I and one or two other people know what he's doing. So he throws this at me. We'll do. Out. Um, look, love, if you go to the court, you can take a summons out against him. There's nothing I can do. Court? So you're not going to arrest him? I've got to go, madam. I'm sorry. Well, what about the evidence? Just one drink, I've told you once. I'll do it for you. You've had enough. I haven't had one. I've got it in my pub, you haven't. Now, get lost. Oi! What? Now, I've got I have you, son. All right. What's your game? I just want a drink. He's out of his skull. Hey, I'll deal with this. Look, I don't have to serve anyone. I'll just have my pub decorated. I don't want drunks like him littering the place up. I said, keep out of it. Come on, off you go. I've got to go and see Susan. I can't see her without a drink. You're well over the top now, mate. I'm not. I'm not honest. Please. Please. What's this, sir? Oh, yeah. I've got him on prescription. And you want a drink? I've only had a few. Oh, he's a pillhead, is he? Coming off the premises. <laughs> Stop that, or you're nicked. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. All ready for the last round? Yes, the candidates are all here, sir. The first one will be with us in two minutes. Oh, good. Goes this far. Yes, Robert Gower. How many candidates have we got left to see? Six, sir. And how many have we got to select this afternoon? One. Mm. Five unlucky candidates, then. Right, gentlemen. How long have you been on Valium, then? Since Susan went back to her mother's. She's got my kid. Yeah, I understand that. But it's not going to help getting doped up, is it? Her mother wants it for herself. Well, she's not. Now, listen, Tony. If she won't let me see her, I'm going to do something. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Is she on the phone? Who? Susan, at her mum's. Has she got a phone, has she? Uh, yeah. Right, here's what you're going to do. First, go home and think about what you're going to say to her and then ring her up and arrange with Susan's mum when you can go and see her, all right? No, no, I can't. She won't. Why not? But her mum hates me. She won't let me say anything. Come on, we're going back to your flat. Never mind booze, it's a cup of tea you need. I'm, I'm all right, I'm all right. I'll manage. Cheers, mate. 139 receiving. Yeah, can you give us a sit rep, please, Tim? Uh, yeah. Congratulations, mate. I gave him both the warning formula and sent him on his way. The publican was a bit of a handful, but the other bloke's OK now. I just reckon he needed a bit of calming 
Good. Yeah, yeah cheers, Tim. You. Out. Where is this? Gordon Bennett. You're asking but for a situation okay. report. He it's gives just you a stall. novel. Shh. Sorry, madam. Fish Street. I don't think we know what the fuck is going on. What the fuck is going on? What the fuck is going on? What the fuck is going on? You're not doing it. You didn't have to do it. And what happened to you lot anyway? I came and spoke to one of you. It's a domestic disturbance. Apparently a child could be involved. If you can check it out. On my way, darling. I don't know his full name, but apparently he's called Tony. Yeah. Spare me the details, Alec. I'm just passing on information. Inspector Munro hasn't spoken to us, sir. No, but he's spoken to me, and I'm speaking to you. Now, he's understandably concerned that the state of the locker room constitutes a health hazard, and it wants clearing up. Well, I'll see to it, sir. And, uh, by all accounts, there's no need for you to stop at the PC's locker room. Sergeant. Uh, uh, no, sir, I'll go through them all, sir. Mm. And should you find anything unusual, I suggest you put it straight in the bin, if you catch my meaning. Excuse me, sir, I've just had a call from a woman in Campion Way. It looks like a possible siege situation. All right, come on. What's the SP? Well, PC's Hollis and Turnham are there now. I think there could be drugs involved if it's the same man that PC Abel spoke to earlier. Right, where's the duty officer? Four hours dentist, sir. Ah. You better get straight over there, Alex. Right, sir. It's number 19, Sarge. Check. Who reported this? The uh, next door neighbour, sir. Uh, apparently the occupiers are Mrs. Richards and her daughter Susan. They came home to find a man with a knife inside the house. There's a young child involved as well, sir. Oh, yeah, tell them, pull the other one, Reg. She's destroyed All right. my Yes, yeah, fine. Uh, They're not doing anything about... She's absolutely crazy. We're going to need a dog. The house is wrecked, Sarge. Nobody is doing anything about that. You nearly cut my head up with a carving knife. Everyone, can you get back first? Everyone back. Tim, I want you to cover the rear. And no bloody heroics, all right? Get back, please. Am I invisible? You shut it! Rich. Brief the lads, will you? I'm going round the back to keep Abel company. Sarge. Fifth. Look after Miss Richards and my baby, will you? Right, Sarge. Have you established what's going on inside the house? Yeah, I'm going to need a negotiator and a social worker as soon as possible. Sort that out, will you? Yes, sir. Anything else at this stage? No, sir, except I can confirm he's alone in the house and armed with a knife of some sort. They say he's a big man, he's on drugs and very dangerous. Sierra Oscar from 139. It is Tony. I'm going to go in. What's he think he's doing? Never mind about all that. Get a hold of Alec Peters. Tim? Tim? I want to talk. I want to help Tony. Listen to me, please. Tony, please listen. Don't. Got you. Please listen, Tony. I promise no tricks. No one's going to come busting in through the door. Says you. Can I stand? Well, I'm going to. See? No radio, nothing. Just me. 
You make a better target now. Why should you want to hurt me? That cow out there. She's done this. Yeah. You're dead right. What? I've seen her. She's a right sleaze bag. She better not hear you. Duff, you're entitled to see your own child. You tell her that. You idiot. You think of something. What the hell do you think I've been trying to do? Oh, you've never spoken to her. Are you calling me a liar? All you want to do is get me out of here. Right. Go on. You know it all. That's it. Kill yourself. Listen, mister. You're full of your own troubles. Go on, do it. Do it. Do it. You're mad. Yeah, and you're sane. Listen, I've arranged a meet between you and Susan. That's her name, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, but you've got it all sussed. I'm a liar. Okay, I'm off. Stop. Honest. Yeah, and you can see the baby as well. She said that? Yeah. I'll prove it if you like. Let me use the radio. No tricks. Sarge. You all right, Tim? Fine. Fine, Sarge. I'm talking to Tony. And I'm just telling him about Susan and the baby. And yes. And I'm just saying, no hassle. He can talk to her and hold the baby. Tim, yes, there's no sweat. Uh, take your time, son. Watch yourself, son. All right? It's a trick. Oh, OK. No, just hang on. I'm confused. I can definitely see her. You've heard the radio. Come on. I've done my bit. Now you do yours. <laughs> Come on, let's get you tidy. I can't go up like this. We'll see, I've been crying. Yeah. You've really got it in for us, haven't you? What are you trying to do? Give us all heart attacks? You know I'm going to have to tell Inspector Munro about this? Yes, Sarge. And there'll probably be words with Mr Conway, too. I believe I did the right thing, Sarge. You what? I knew the man. I spoke to him earlier, Sarge. Yeah, when he was as high as a kite and you sent him on his way. What on earth were you thinking of? Well, you said that a domestic... Yes, domestics, yet not homicidal maniacs with meat cleavers. It wasn't a meat cleaver, Sarge. It could have been very serious. You could have been killed. And apart from how terribly sorry I'd have been if you were, it would not have got me very many brownie points. Is that clear? Yes, Sarge. Oh, come on, Tim, you had us terrified. I wasn't enjoying myself either, Sarge. No risks, eh? The next time you use this, nobody's looking for heroes. And if you haven't learnt that yet, now is the time to start. All right. Knock out your report and get back out there. And this time, on foot. And Tim? Canteen first, eh? Would you say on balance that you put your sporting interests first at university? Well, I was very keen on rowing. I always have been. And rugby? Yes, I played for the college. I didn't get a blue, I'm afraid. You disappointed in your degree? I think one makes a sort of decision. I decided not to spend three years in the library. I think that's easier to forgive than the fact that you bumped corpus last year. <laughs> 
All right, Mr. Gow. Are there any questions you'd like to ask us? Well, yes, I, I would like to ask on the graduate entry scheme, how long one has to spend on the beat. The minimum requirement is two years. Do you have a problem with that? Oh, no, not at all. It's just that I thought, you know, that management is probably the area I'm most suited to. Yes, I understand that. The point of the graduate entry scheme is to allow the recruit to work at as many fields as possible. That way we find out where their strengths are. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> Fight! Come on, you! Oh. I said! Oh. What's it all about? Are you like kids? Come on, up you get. He said, Pack it in! Oh. Anybody see what happened? No. Uh, just shake hands and get yourselves in fight. Right. Behave yourself. You better go while you can, alright? Oh, Cut it out. He's. <laughs> You've had your warning. Sierra Oscar, the one three nine. Come on. So you're not very keen on sports, Mr. Turnbull? Well, no, it's not that. It's like uh, I'm normally a bit busy, you know. I'm rebuilding my girlfriend's house. Oh, really? Yeah, she's a copper. Uh, WPC. She's got two kids, and oh, I, I'm, I mean, it's all sorted out. Uh, she's divorced, and it's. Uh, uh, her ex isn't too bothered. He's got another family. Was it her idea that you joined the police force? Well, no, not her idea. No, it was my idea. Of course, I've talked to her about it. I mean, well, I've always wanted to be a policeman. I've tried twice. Yes, I believe the last time you failed on the exam. Have you done anything to improve your qualifications? Well, yes, I've sat the exam again, and I got an English O-level. But on me maths, uh, I only got a seven. Oh, yes, your maths is still letting you down. Well, I mean, I can add up. It was a geometry. Yes, well, I don't think we need to go into the details of the exam here. Yeah. Tell us what you see as the role of a police officer, Mr Turnbull. It's all about controlling people, isn't it? I mean, that could be helping someone across a road or well, arresting them, if you need to. Well, that's what I want to do anyway. If you could just sign there, please, madam. Think yourselves fortunate the stall holder doesn't want to press charges. Well, it's disgusting. Look at my coat. Well, Who's going to pay for friends. the dry cleaning? He overcharges. He shouldn't too. be in this market anyway. No, he should not. And since no damage was done and you're paying for the fruit that was spoiled, you've both been cautioned. It should never have come to this. No, it shouldn't. If that policeman had done his duty... You're lucky you're not facing a charge of criminal damage. If the cells weren't so overcrowded, I'd cool you off in one. Right, now kick him out of here. I want to make a complaint. My God, this is a day. You and me both, Sunshine. I blame the last relief, lumbering us with unfinished business. You should see the state of those cells. We all pass on to the next lot, don't we? We get by by the skin of our teeth. Hello. Mm -hmm. That's a major problem. I've got another one for you, Sarge. Drunk and disorderly. Yes, I agree. I can't fault his qualifications. On paper, Guy should make a model policeman. Then, with respect, sir, I don't see what your objection is. It's just that I expected to see a level of commitment which wasn't there. He's guilty of being too well qualified, perhaps. I beg your pardon? Well, isn't that the complaint we hear so often from senior management? I got where I am without an expensive set of credentials. Why can't they? No, it's not what I'm saying. I must agree with Mr. Wills. As I'm sure you're aware, the management and recruitment guidelines continually stress the importance of education. And I'm sure you would agree that brilliant qualifications do not necessarily mean a good police officer. I'll consider Gower's application a lot more seriously if he applies again in two years' time. Doesn't this go against the prescribed ruling, sir? Well, you know what they say about rules. Yes, sir. What we need is good, solid coppers on the ground. Not necessarily Bramshill scholars or overachievers. Just men who are happy to be on the streets and learning about them. That's why my choice is Turnbull. Fair enough? Well, yes, of course. Hi, right, Derek. You got a problem? No, sir, not there. She's the least of my worries. It has been what you might call an eventful afternoon. Oh? That PCA ball, sir. Abel? Probationer. He went over the top a bit this afternoon, gave us all a bit of a fright. Nobody hurt, I hope? No, no, Sergeant Peters looked after him, all right. Good. I'll go and have a word with the sergeant. Perhaps I should have a chat with PC Abel while I'm at it. I've got time on my hands. It's probably long overdue. Yes, friendly chat from the air traffic controller might stop him going into orbit. All right. Well, I'll play it by you. 
I don't like drunks without names, son. Funny, isn't it, Sarge? Nothing on him at all. Am I laughing? Oh, Sergeant, everything all right? Everything's fine, sir. PC Abel, just the man. My office, five minutes, please. Sarge? What do you think he wants me for? Probably a long service medal. Trying to attract my attention. What about my money? So, how are you liking the job? It's great, sir. Good. Well, your paperwork's good. Appearance excellent. That's vital. Yes, sir. Public confidence is reflected by the Bobby on the beat. The most important cog in the wheel. Never forget that. No, sir. I've heard it said that you're rather impulsive. I don't quite understand, sir. Don't worry. Happens to lots of young officers. Hopefully, it'll be replaced by experience. Oh, I see. Just on keen, sir. Hmm. Not to be confused with zeal. Just remember the service expects the very best from you. A hasty decision of yours on the streets could finish up in the House of Lords. I don't intend to put my job on the line, sir, if that's what you mean. Good. Because the days of the hothead are over, thankfully. Right. Is there anything that you want to bring to my attention? Not really, sir. Because this is the time and the place to clear the air. I'm sure we're all pulling in the same direction. No clash of personalities. Well, try, thank you. There is one thing, sir. Hmm? The green man. Pardon? The pub, sir. I'm sorry, it doesn't ring a bell. You know, sir, the spit and sawdust place down Farquhar Street. Oh, yes. Yes, what's the problem? I don't think it's the sort of place that one officer should respond to at chucking out time. Uh, no, no, good point. Well, um, tell the sergeant. You, um, got a case today? Yes, sir, drunken disorder. Ah. You did give him a chance to go home? Yes, sir, but it was impossible. Mm? It's all right. We must be firm. Temper our decisions with mercy. Let's ensure the custody officer keeps a check according to the regulations. I couldn't avoid arresting him, sir. Oh, no, I'm sure you did the right thing. All right, Abel, thank you. Thank you, sir. You wanted me, Sarge. Straightforward, drunk and disorderly, eh? He was given plenty of opportunity to... To what? To go home, Sarge. Like his mate? Yeah, well, he used his head. Yes, he probably did, which is more than you did, you cretin. Now we know why our itinerant inebriate had nothing on him. I don't understand, Sarge. That mate, the one you let go... What about him? It's now alleged he was in the process of robbing him. 